thank you for watching The Forum. I'm your host, Ashley Tate, here with my co-host, Christy Largent. And today we are speaking with the owner and publisher, Pamela Newman, of North State Parent. And this is a magazine that's a local magazine here in Reading and... Well, are we all over? Oh, all over? I know, I have like oh, Red to the list. Yeah, Mount <laughs> Shasta, all over. Keep five going. counties, yeah. Sir. yeah. Tell us those five counties, all five. Uh, Butte, Tehama, Siskiyou, Shasta, and Glen counties. So pretty much the entire North State. Yes. That is fantastic, which ambitious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> North State parent. Are we going to yes. show you, can I show you now what the magazine looks like? I'll hold it up. You've seen it everywhere. It's in newsstands everywhere. It may come home with your kid from school like it does with mine. <laughs> you have a huge publication. How many, how many copies are you running every month? Uh, 17,000 copies go out each month. Wow. Mm -hmm. And every okay. month uh, it has a beautiful new cover and nice editorials in there. And you pretty much do majority of it. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> oh, well, you know, there's seven people. I don't want to, it's not me. Right, yeah. right, right. Well, I mean, you coordinate it. You make mm, sure it I do a lot of work. Yeah. That's true. But we have a wonderful editor. A lot of people know her in that she's uh, works on the calendar and uh -huh. helps us organize community events and um, as well as the editorial. So she's constantly on the phone talking to people all over the North State. That's fantastic. And we're so lucky to have her. Yeah. And then a wonderful designer, a couple wonderful designers. Um, just, uh, you know. You've put together a great team. Mm -hmm. It's a great team. And they, um, they're, you know, most of them have, ra have raised children already or they're in the midst of that as well. Oh, that's so they're great. shuffling off their kids while they're delivering magazines or they're, you know, putting advertisements together or what have you, so, yeah. yeah. So, Pam, how did you get started? What made you say, oh, I'm going to start a North, pa North State Parent Magazine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what made me say that? <laughs> yeah. You know, I uh, moved to Reading many, many years ago. Uh, I think it was uh, 92, and um, we moved here with four little children. And I had worked for previous magazines in other areas like this. I used to do photography work. Oh. And there are many parent magazines in different cities, especially mm -hmm. larger cities. Mm -hmm. And when I moved here, um, a couple of people said, you should start one of those magazines here. We really need something like that. And I thought, oh boy, too much work. I've already seen how much work <laughs> that is. But honestly, you know, people kept just saying it would be such a great fit for this area to bring our different communities together, to bring mm -hmm. Chico and Reading together, mm -hmm. to f have them not feel so separate in a lot of ways because there's good resources in both areas, right. different kinds of resources. Um, and because of our area needing more positive parenting information out there, uh, we just worked really hard to, to start and it was just really well received and we had such a great, um, the first issue was uh, October 93. Wow. And uh, we were called Shasta Parent at the time and some people still call us that but our name is North State Parent and it has been for a number of years because Shasta felt a little, they kept thinking Mount Shasta. Right, and yeah. So, yeah. But, you know, we're for lots of areas. And, and the branding worked out better too. Yes, oh, yes it did. So uh, why were you so passionate about starting a parenting magazine? You know, um, I, I've always been one, uh, as I said, I raised four children. I had a background in journalism a little bit, but more importantly, it was about community building, which I know you both, yeah. that's why it's so <laughs> wonderful to be here with you. Oh. Talk about community builders. Aww, <laughs> um, so I really wanted to do something that gives to families. I feel like it's important to have a publication that really, um, you know, gives the positive information for parents because, as, especially when parents like they just move here from somewhere else and they're going, you know, where's this? Where's that? They love picking up one resource that mm -hmm. can connect them mm -hmm. with family-run businesses. Um, a lot of educational mm -hmm. information, mm -hmm. uh, just really positive, you know, information. Yeah. So that that just really rung true to my heart. You know, mm -hmm. this has been a real mm -hmm. uh, collaboration with, you know, like I said, uh, locally owned businesses to organizations. We do, we help um, the whole Earth and Watershed event that wow, happens yeah, in April. Yeah. We help with. Um, the symphony is yeah. uh, now has a focus where families can come and children to a certain concert, which happens next month in January. Ooh. Um, so there's even uh, one for little ones, yeah. like a preschooler can now go to the symphony and see a performance, which is fantastic to have. Wow. And it's just you know. So you collaborated with them on that? Okay. Well, yeah, they just came to us and they said they wanted to do this thing. Actually, they were doing it, and I said, hey, we want to yeah. be part of that. Yeah. We want to really you know, help you in any way. Because right. these are the things that build community and build it in such a positive way. Right. So 
how do you start a magazine? If you are interested <laughs> in starting a magazine, because this looks so daunting mm. and you do such a great job yeah. and I'm sure it's been a journey and it's evolved obviously over time, but if someone was out there and they wanted to start a magazine, how do they do that? Well, <laughs> you have to Big question. get print savvy. I mean, you have to understand you know how magazines are put together you have to talk to printers you have to there's a lot to do with that mm -hmm. you have to do your homework you have to yeah. look at the demographics of an area and see if there are enough children here when we first moved here there was more retired people right. and that had us a little bit concerned whether the numbers would be enough which is why we had to fuse the different communities mm -hmm. together such as Bay Area Parent well they actually have separate publications right, for each yeah, they probably section have, yeah. now but they didn't used to yeah so um, you know, you just have to kind of dig in there and really uh, go about doing your homework. You, you've got to be a great connector. Yeah. You know, you, as you know, you can't just sit home and think it's all going to happen. Right, right. We work with a lot of local businesses, like I said, and um, the ones that survive are the ones that are proactive. Yeah. And they just, you can't sit back and let business happen. I don't feel you've got to be yeah. out there. And you are, I was going to say, you are very proactive. You do take a lot of initiative. And just like you were saying, you know, the symphony wanted to do their thing, mm -hmm. but you reached out to them, and that's yeah. great. Yeah. I mean, those are the types of things, because people who don't necessarily have children, not all the people running the symphony have kids. So Right, they nice might not relate them. to that. Exactly. But you know what? If we think about children, um, growing up in this community and we want to hold them here, mm -hmm. then we have to look at not what age they are right now, exactly. but what age mm -hmm. they're going to be in mm -hmm. 10 years, in mm -hmm. 20 years, in 30 years. Mm -hmm. We want them to bring bringing their children right. to Turtle Bay, for yeah. instance, yeah. not mm -hmm. just for them now, but just for, you know, a lot of the we advertisers. see the city in the way that yeah. they might see it 10 years from now, mm -hmm. yeah. which is really interesting. Well, and you're training them. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing yeah. I love is in your magazine, you always show what's upcoming, what can you do, what yeah. are activities are available, and yeah. things Absolutely. like taking them to the symphony or taking them to Turtle Bay yeah. is building that skill, if mm -hmm. you will, yes. or that expectation mm -hmm. that when they're grown up, they're going to go to Turtle Bay right. or to the museum. They're going to go to the symphony because that's part of who they are. That's yeah. part of what they right. do. And I think you guys do a really good job yeah. of showcasing those type of things. Well, again, that's the education piece. We want to, you know, we want our kids to know how to sit inside of an auditorium, exactly. you know, and yeah. maybe we right. have a little, you know, expectation of them when they're younger, that it's a very short sit, right. you know. Right. Right. Yeah, a short right. sit, yeah. Right. yeah. I'm not trying to be unrealistic about right. that, but I do know personally from raising my own kids and taking them to a lot of things mm. from when they were really tiny, yeah. how they got, you know, they just got used to mm. being quiet when they needed to be quiet or being right. appropriate, so. So what are some of the components that people can expect to see in your magazine, you know, if they see it and they want to pick it up? Like, what are some things that they might find in there? Right. Well, that's a good question. So every month you will find a, a month-long calendar, and that's really important because that has free and low-cost events. It has it has all kinds of things. But again, there are things within our pretty much within our five-county region. Um, we do advertise a few things up north a little bit, like the mm -hmm. Science Works Museum, which is nothing like what we have down here. It's unique to the Ashland, Oregon area. Um, you will find, you know, just all, and it's all laid out for a month. So we know many families that breeze through the calendar and start picking out what they're going to do for the month, mm -hmm. what things mm -hmm. they're going to go yeah. to, mm -hmm. and and then mm -hmm. they um, share that with their neighbors, their friends, and so that's really fun because then we're, you know, we're getting those kids out, right. seeing things, and, and, and building all Building community. Building community. Yeah. There's many articles in there. Um, we have an article this month about, you know, adults, if you have to get braces, like mm -hmm. what that's all about, you know, because <laughs> Yeah. Not everything is directed specific, specifically for the kids. It's you know it's for women because yeah. women You're are the ones. You're speaking to the parents. Yes, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. yeah, we're not a kids magazine. We right. don't have a coloring page. Right, on there. right, 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 right. But we do have a lot of information about a variety of things, and we always have a local family or or um, kids on the cover. They're not stock photos. Yeah, or generic right, right, photos. Right. So how do you decide who you're going to feature? Because you always have really interesting articles, and yeah, and yeah. How well, do you decide who's who? who's going to be showcased? You know, a lot of it is community feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we get just hundreds of emails saying, you know, would you think about this? Would you think oh. about that? But I also tend to be out in the community. I meet with principals all over the North State. I, I check into what's going on at their schools, who they know. Mm -hmm. That's
that helps us get um, relevant editorial content, mm -hmm. also helps us uh, know what the concerns are of that particular you know, area. Maybe it's a Glen County School, maybe it's a Tehama County School, yeah. maybe it's how I met, how I learned about you was the principal at Boulder Creek. Yeah, that's true. They were true. telling yeah, me that's all great. about your great work, and I'm like, oh, I need to you. know this lady. Oh, and launch pad. Because <laughs> it's yeah. so yeah. much yeah. about what I'm about. It's yeah. just like helping. Yeah, that's people. true. I so. forgot that that's how we met. But, <laughs> but, and then she does just reach out, and that's what I was saying. She reaches out, and she finds things, and then talks about, you know, one how, thing leads to another. Right, exactly. <laughs> but it's very interesting how you look at the community from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you look at women and I look mm -hmm. at kids and right. you're looking at the parents. So what if so somebody wants to write for you? How would yeah. they go about contacting oh, you for that? Yeah, they just, you know, my email's always in the magazine. I, they would work directly with our editor yeah. more than me. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, we love, especially if they're very skilled writers, we, yeah. we're always looking for good writers. Okay. Um, because, you know, we put out a publication every month. <laughs> So, that's um, a deadline yes. every month. Yes. And it's content. You yeah. need new yeah. content all the yeah. time. But we're never short on things. It's not right. like, I think in the first issue, you know, we were a little bit like, what are we going to yeah. put in this thing, yeah. you know, that's local. We actually worked with Sacramento Parent when we first got mm -hmm. started, and they mm -hmm. helped us get You started. don't need to do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so what's your website if people want to know more? Oh, yeah. If they don't see it? That's www.norstateparent.com. Okay. And we have a lot of information on there as well. Some of it that's in the magazine and some other things as, as well. Oh, Oh, good on the website. Mm -hmm. So unique to the website can, content. Yeah. So NorthStateParent.com is where we would yeah. go for more information. Contact you for questions or, sure. or your editor if they want to write. Advertising, you guys do a great job with advertising. So if someone wants to be advertising in North State Parent, We've got all a that lot information of is on the that. website. Yeah, yeah, you do. You have a lot of, of positive uh, benefits for both the people you're interviewing as well as your advertisers. Thank you. So thank you for coming on. Thank you for We appreciate it. Yeah. 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 So right. we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with the second half of our show right here on the forum. Thank you, Pam, oh, North thank State you. Parent. <laughs> we'll see you in just a minute. <laughs> Hello, and we are back today, and um, we're speaking with some positive youth programs, and um, we are speaking with, I'm going to start with Julie DePrada, and she's the outreach coordinator with the Ch Child Abuse Prevention Coordinating Council. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> and under that program, which is also known as CAPSI, um, there is the Anderson Youth Teen Center. Mm -hmm. And this is Barbara Jackson, and she is the project coordinator. And I think I just had an issue with your name there. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We got a oh, lot of mouthfuls. That was a big mouthful. Going on. You know what? Well, let's start with Julie. Yes, Julie what? works for, as an outreach coordinator for CAPSI. Yes. CAPSI. Yes. CAPSI. Mm -hmm. CAPSI. Sure. Just a CAPSI. So the deal is it's coordinating all the child, uh, childhood abuse prevention. Yes. And she can explain options. that even better. So Julie, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> why don't you tell us more detail about what is CAPSI, what do you do, and so forth. Okay, so really quick, like CAPSI was formed because there was legislation made if you have a child protective services, you have to have a prevention council at oh, the same time. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. It was formed, but it's not funded by. So there's a lot of things that people don't know about us. One, we're a nonprofit. We are not under the county. We just hmm. serve Shasta County. So wow. we serve Anderson. We serve Bernie. We serve all over the Shasta County region. We serve with uh, parent partners. We have community parent partners and we have a pathway parent partners. And those work with families, with younger kids that need a little bit more help. So we do parenting classes and we provide things like diapers if they're running out of diapers. And we have a family resource center so people can go there if they need resources like how to get a doctor, how to deal with speech uh, therapy, or if they are in the process of being with uh, Child Protective Services, uh, they can come to us also and they can get the services to help them either get their children back or to make sure that they don't go to that area, that they don't get taken away. Like how do you parent effectively? Exactly. And okay. so we also serve the community by doing the mandated reporter training. We do shaken baby training and we also do the child death uh, or 
child SIDS. abuse. No, yet yeah, we do SIDS also, okay. and uh, child abuse when when there's uh, sexual child abuse also. Mm -hmm. We do programs to teach the community about that. <clears throat> But one of our biggest programs is the Anderson Teen Center, and I'll let you <laughs> go into that Talk one more. Are. Yeah. So tell us about how long you've been with the Anderson Teen Center and how long it's been around. So the Anderson Teen Center was established, it was back in the late 90s. Okay. They did a community survey in Anderson to see what was the greatest need. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that came up as the greatest need was to have something for youth and specifically for teens to do in the after school hours. And by 2001, we had opened up the Anderson Teen Center. Wow. Yeah. I really do actually feel like that's a, a need anywhere. I mean, it for is. all teens, you know, I mean, they just need something to do so they don't get into trouble. So what are some of the programs that you offer at the Anderson Teen Center? We offer so many different varieties of programs yeah. that are within leadership, community service, um, a lot of things in arts, uh, music. We have cooking classes. Hmm. We have, um, I'm drawing a blank now that you're asking all these different things. Yeah. We have so it's already a lot. So yeah, that's we have like a peer <laughs> support group that just recently started this oh, wow. school year that we do weekly. Uh, we have volunteers that come in and do so many different things. One of our volunteers this year is teaching guitar and keyboard oh, lessons. I love it. Um, they plan events. They do a lot of community service. We're volunteering down at our local food bank that the uh, Anderson Cottonwood Christian Assistance and preparing food baskets right now for, we just finished Thanksgiving and we're doing the Christmas ones. Wow. Really anything that we think is an interest for the kids that they're excited about doing that helps them figure out what they want to do with their future or just to relax and have a good time after school, we try and provide that and, and give them that opportunity. So okay. um, where are you guys located? We're at 2889 East Center Street. Um, it's a big tall, it's the two-story brick building with the clock tower. That's how everybody yeah. recognizes us. Are you us. by Burrito Bandito? We're next mm -hmm. to that and we oh. share our building. <laughs> the most important thing yeah. in Anderson. <laughs> and, and we share Where's the, the Burrito Bandito? <laughs> we share the building with the county. Um, okay. It's uh, partially the teen center um, owned by the city and then all also Shasta County and all of their, a um, lot of their regional service offices. And how many there. kids are participating? How we, many kids use you? We see an average of 300 kids um, a school year mm -hmm. and we're currently averaging 45 to 50 kids a day. Well, oh, it, wow. So can wow. any child go to the Anderson Teen Center? Anybody can come to the Teen Center that is in 7th through 12th grade. Doesn't matter where you live, doesn't matter anything. And at it doesn't all. matter. It's just a, a public teen center. We're a public mm -hmm. teen center. Everything is free. It, you have to be in 7th to 12th grade or 13 to 17 years old. So what? That logistically, is how does it work? Like, I'm thinking about a 13 year old coming in and having 18, 19 year olds in the same environment. And they can't be. They have to, seven, okay, so it's how does capped off at 12th grade. And that's why it's all no adults. It, but she's just saying that like it, the, the, 12th, the 12th different, grader could be the 18. Seventh, right. If, as long as they're still in school. Right. But so my seventh grader comes. I'm not sure I want, you know, tell me how you like logistically work it out. You with know, that age they do. Range. We don't have to. Oh. They all work so well together. The older kids actually mentor some of the younger ones. They do break off into their cliques also so that they have their groups and hang out with their own friends. A lot of them meet. They come solo. They don't know anybody. Mm -hmm. And wow. they get a great opportunity That's to meet brave. other kids. That's a brave thing to do. Yes. To come they, someplace by yourself they've as a heard child, about us, right? As um, a teenager. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're referred from other kids. A lot of times they've just heard about us and they kind of quietly come in the door and check us out. And we do an orientation with them right away and show them around the building, sh introduce them to people, show them all the activities, where everything is, and connect them with other kids right away that we think that they might have something in common with, get them connected to one of our staff members who are just great at building relationships right away with the kids, making them feel at ease and at home. How many staff members are there on a daily? Are you Monday through Friday? We are, you are open? Monday through Friday from okay. 3 to 6 o'clock. Okay. And we run the teen center with myself and three other staff members mm -hmm. and then volunteers. Right now we have three or four weekly regular volunteers that come in. Uh, we have Shasta College student interns that mm -hmm. come in and help work mm -hmm. with us, but three, three CAPSI staff members. 
Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. So, I mean, like, do you have on your, how would somebody say they want to take a cooking class? How would they know when the cooking class is going to be? Uh, we have out on our uh, CAPSI's website and on the Teen Center's Facebook page is our schedule, and we call it a tentative schedule yeah. because it changes all the time. When a new volunteer comes in and has a great program they want to run with kids, then we'll alter the schedule and fit that in. If right. the kids want to try something new, but most of our regular weekly activities stay the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Wow. And what do they generally, so what are some of the activities that they generally do? So a, a new teen is coming in, I mean, is there a place that they can come and just like read their books or do their homework or, you know, or is it like, put your book bags aside and let's get jumping into activity. It's a little bit activity. of everything. It kind of depends on what their interest is. They can't, we have a bank of six computers okay. and they can't go on the computers until four o'clock unless they're doing homework. So okay. that way, if somebody really wants to come in right away and get some homework done and out of the way, we have somebody there who can help them and they can use the computers okay. for as long as they want to to do homework. Okay. Um, we offer snacks, free snacks to the mm -hmm. kids as that's soon as they come in yeah. every day. That's fantastic. Um, which is wonderful that that's provided for them. Um, so every day they put down their things, like you said, they sign in, they get snacks, and then whatever they want to do. That's great. There's different areas all over the teen center set up, some for music, some for the games, some for the computers. They can, we have little areas set up where they can just sit with groups and talk with their friends. Oh. We have basketball courts and a whole outside really? courtyard. Mm -hmm. So wow. they can be inside or outside, whichever place they want to be. If kids wow. are outside, then one of our staff members goes outside with the kids. That's and, great. And hangs out and does activities with them out there. Wow. Have I'm you pretty had blown any away. Have you had any trouble with like drugs or bullying or any of that kind of stuff? I think the same as anybody would. That you, you, we get a little bit of every element there. Mm -hmm. um, we have every type of kid that you can think of possibly comes there. So yes, sometimes even kids that are not part of the teen center that are just in the neighborhood around. So mm -hmm. yes, we see that. We work really closely with law enforcement and Anderson Police Department. Mm -hmm. um, whenever issues and circumstances like that do come up we work really closely and they jump right on it um, and then we really work with the kids to talk about it to talk about why these things happen we do bring in intervention we have smoking cessation that we bring in um, we re do referrals to um, both smoking cessation and to um, whatever type of drug or Dinner other alcohol. type of alcohol any type of assistance they that they might need mm -hmm. we refer them to the resources and help um, for them and their families that would be useful and just on that note I actually think mm -hmm. that um, you can't ever prevent any of that stuff happening no. you know just right. because I mean you're getting the same element that you would at school like any school the same access yeah that you would get at school so if those kids are bringing whatever they're bringing to school they're going to bring it wherever exactly. they're going mm -hmm. next our um, goal is that through our programs and the activities and the things that we do that we will reduce exactly uh, those high-risk behaviors are you, so are you measuring that I'm curious about like do you have any how do you know your programs working like is it because you have kids coming? That is such a difficult question, <laughs> yes, because no, there's some things that are just not measurable right. that we don't, we can't measure every little detail like that, but we do track who participates. Mm -hmm. We track who, we, they have to sign in to each individual program that they participate in mm -hmm. so that we can see what's working and what's not. Mm -hmm. And our best way of tracking how we are making a difference is by the relationships that we're building with these kids mm -hmm. and that they open up with us and they're honest with our staff and they talk with them and they'll share if if there's something going wrong in their lives that they need help with that's what we measure mm -hmm. is and how yeah. we're really reaching them and and how we're impacting their lives mm -hmm. and making a difference mm -hmm. more than how many are changing what they're doing mm -hmm. I've just wondered like if you I don't know it, it seems like for these kind of there's such good programs yes. and yet you're you're always wanting money you're always needing money always right mm -hmm. always needing funding you guys run out in nine months if somebody hears about this program they're like I would love to donate what's involved to do that to help support the program that we want support all and always could use support so many different ways whether it's through financial support just by making donations okay um, we've had people that donate items we've had furniture donated yeah, I was say. Um, mm -hmm. and and new game systems and things like that that mm -hmm. get donated to us mm -hmm. and then volunteers and mm -hmm. donating of time because three staff members are stretched when right. you have 50 kids right. in that's there. a lot of kids so what's your website what are the website information portals that we can say at Shasta CAPC so Shasta C-A-P-C dot org 
C-A-P-C dot org. org. Shasta, Shasta Capsi. Capsi. And the Teen okay. Center has a link on that site, okay. and then the Teen Center has our own Facebook page. Okay, so we we'll find you on Facebook. You can look at the website, Shasta, C-A-P-C, Capsi. Mm -hmm. Dot org. Yes. Right. And I just yeah. want to add one thing. I think yeah. the nice thing about your program is that you really are being the, not that being a stay-at-home mom is the epitome of anything, but you really are being that parent that is not there at that time for whatever reason that they cannot be. And I think it's mm -hmm. nice to have that element for these kids because and even when otherwise the parents they're are by home, themselves. Sometimes it's nice to have somebody else. Were there like I love totally. loving adults That's in my saying. kids' life. Yes. Right? right. Take I'm home, lunch. I'm there with them, but I love having and that And maybe they don't want to talk to you about yeah. whatever's going on. Like thank they, you so they much. They need to have other adult relationships And you guys are giving lives. that. So thank you. Yes. What a great, thank you. great story. Thank you. We love having you on. Thanks for watching. What a fast show. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> We will look forward to seeing you next time right here on the forum.